If you're studying for the INBDE, I highly recommend INBDE Bootcamp, an all-in-one study resource that will help you pass your exam. Use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here, and welcome back to Mental Dental. Have you ever wondered what really happens after you toss that graduation cap in the air and step into your first dental practice? Well, that's what I'll be talking about in this video. Textbooks do teach you a lot, but they don't prepare you for everything. So today I'm sharing the raw, unfiltered truth about my first year in practice, the triumphs, the mishaps, and the unexpected lessons that no dental school lecture ever covered. Graduating from dental school is a huge accomplishment, but here's the reality, it's just the beginning. Dental school gives you a good foundation, but it doesn't make you a master of everything. In fact, there's not enough time during those four years to train students in all areas of clinical care, let alone the business side of running a practice. Some schools will claim they have a robust practice management curriculum, but from what I've seen, a program of that caliber just doesn't exist. And that's okay, because the most valuable mindset that you can carry into your career is a willingness to learn more. Whether it's taking continuing education courses, finding a mentor, or just observing how experienced colleagues handle tricky situations, the first year after graduation is where the real education begins. So graduate with a lifelong learning mindset. Next, let's talk about something that no one wants to admit, burnout. Unfortunately, it's becoming more and more common in our profession. The first year especially can feel overwhelming. You have new patients, long hours, maybe even corporate pressures or a practice owner who's breathing down your neck. But here's the secret. Preventing burnout starts with taking charge of your physical, mental, and financial well-being. Yes, finances are a huge, huge part of this. Many of us leave dental school with six figures of debt. If you ignore it, it will weigh down on you. But if you make a plan, budgeting, understanding your loans and how to pay them back, maybe working with a financial advisor or financial planner, you start to gain control. And when you feel in control of your money, you feel more in control of your career. So prioritize your physical health, your mental health, and your financial health. Lesson three is dealing with angry patients. And yes, you will have them. That is part of the job. It's part of working with people, to be honest with you. And the best advice that I can give you is get angry too. And no, not at the patient. Get angry at the situation. So if someone complains to you and you validate their frustration by matching their tone, they feel heard, they feel listened to. So let me give you an example. Maybe a patient is upset about how expensive their treatment sounds. You could respond with, I get it. Dentistry can feel really expensive and I totally understand why you're frustrated. The cost of materials keeps going up and up and it frustrates me too. Now, suddenly, you're both on the same team. And once the patient feels validated, then you can bring the tone down. You can move into, problem solving mode and offer options like a payment plan or discussing what's urgent versus what can wait in the patient's treatment plan. Of course, if you're actually at fault in a situation, that's totally different. Own it and apologize sincerely. Patients appreciate honesty more than making excuses. But for the vast majority of cases, if you're not directly to blame, then try this get angry approach and watch how well it works. Your first year is also going to be filled with humbling and sometimes hilarious moments. You'll break a burr, a polishing stone will fly out of the handpiece. You'll catch a cotton roll with your burr while you're drilling. You'll fumble through a procedure that seemed straightforward in school. You'll have to look up some notes from class. You'll probably have a patient correct you on something simple. It happens to all of us. And what matters most 
is how you react. Laugh at yourself a little bit, learn from the mistake, and move forward. Patients don't expect perfection, but they do expect honesty, effort, and sincere care. And lastly, let's talk about something that every new graduate goes through, your first job. For many, that first position feels fast-paced, stressful, or even ethically questionable at times. And if that happens, here's the truth. You don't have to stay there. Most dentists don't stick with their very first job out of school long-term. If you do land at a great office right out of school, consider yourself very lucky. Here are two quick examples from my own journey in this department. Number one, the dream job that wasn't. So in my last year of residency, I showed up for an interview that looked perfect from the outside. It was a good location, close to home, beautiful facility, nice people, attentive head doctor, and I thought it was all perfect. Then I got to talk to an associate doctor one-on-one, -on -one, and he told me what happens behind the curtain, that he sees 120 patients per day, and that was my red flag. Right away, I was like, this is not the job for me. So the lesson here, don't just rely on a polished presentation or a picture from the outside. Ask for perspectives from multiple employees if you want the real story. And number two, the perfect plan that fell apart. So I'd also been talking with a pair of doctors for several years throughout my residency, and it looked like the perfect fit for me, again, for a lot of the same reasons. But just before I was set to graduate, they changed their minds. Instead of bringing me on, they decided to sell to corporate, and suddenly there wasn't room for a third doctor. Looking back, I did see some hesitancy along the way and some red flags as well, but I ignored them because everything else looked perfect. So the lesson there, don't put all your eggs in one basket, especially early on, because plans can change. The point here is don't get discouraged, guys. With persistence, you will find a place that's right for you. Today, I'm fortunate to work with a great mentor surrounded by good people in an environment where I can learn and provide high quality care. It's not perfect, but it's so much better than settling for a situation that doesn't align with your values. So if I can summarize everything, here's the big takeaway. Dental school prepares you to be a safe, competent beginner dentist, but the real growth happens after graduation when you face challenges that force you to adapt. Keep learning, protect your well being, manage your finances well, and embrace both the tough moments and the funny ones. And if your first job isn't right, don't settle. The right fit is out there for you. Your first year out of school isn't just about dentistry, it's about becoming the kind of dentist and the kind of person you ultimately want to be. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment below what you'd like to see from me next. And if you want more real world dental advice, make sure to subscribe to this channel, Mental Dental. Until next time, God bless you all, and I'll see you in the next video.